Moving on to the next example, we have a scenario for where a car salesman every week makes $400 plus 5% of his car sales. Write an equation for his weekly salary as a function of sales. So let's introduce some variables. So let W equal his weekly salary. And let S equal his weekly car sales. So if we were to make an equation for his weekly salary as a function of his car sales, so the weekly salary would be the dependent variable and the car sales would be the independent variable. So what does he make per week? Well, he makes $400 as a base and then he makes 5% of his weekly car sales. So we can put 0 0.05 times S. So for example, if his weekly car sales were, this is a small number, but $100, $100 times 0 0.05 is $5. $5 is 5% of 100. So then his weekly salary would be 400 plus that five bucks. Or for example, if his weekly car sales were a thousand, 5% of a thousand, 0 0.05 times a thousand would be 50. So then his weekly salary would be 400 plus 50. So $450 in total. So that is the answer to part A. We can also rewrite this W instead as W as a function of S to make it even more proper. But at the end of the day, they're both the same thing. 400 plus 0 0.05 times S. Moving on to part B, what is the inverse of this function and what does it represent? So let's start off this question by writing out the function that we got in part A. So we got this 400 plus 0 0.05 s and now we have to find the inverse of it now usually when we were dealing with abstract equations we would switch the independent and dependent variable and then solve for the dependent variable usually the y however in word problems when you're finding the inverse you don't want to do that because these variables actually represent something you want to keep the same variables where they are but just isolate for that other variable so instead of in part a in this function, the w is the dependent variable and the s was the independent variable. Now when we find the inverse, we're going to isolate for the s, so the s will be the dependent variable and the w will be the independent variable. So isolating for s, we bring the 400 over, w minus 400 is equal to 0 0.05 s, and then to isolate for s, we would divide both sides by 0 0.05 and we'd end up getting S is equal to W minus 400 over 0 0.05. And then we can also simplify this even further by splitting the fraction up into two terms. Okay, so one divided by 0 0.05 is 20. So we'd have S is 20W minus 400 over 0 0.05 is 8,000. So either or works, this equation and this equation are both the same thing. They're both the inverse of the function that we got in part A. Now to answer the second part of part B, what does this represent? Well, as I mentioned before, in part A, this W here, the weekly salary, was the dependent variable, and the car sales was the independent variable. However, in part B, once we found the inverse, the S became the dependent variable, and the W, the weekly salary, became the independent variable.
So the inverse represents the weekly car sales as a function of the weekly salary. Notice here how we had a function of the weekly, uh, we had the weekly salary as a function of the car sales. Here we have the car sales as a function of the weekly salary. So for example, if I asked you a question according to this scenario like, what would the car salesman's salary be if he made $10,000 worth of sales? Well, we're looking for the salary. I'm asking you for the salary, so we would use this function here. We would input the car sales of 10,000 in for S and solve for W. However, let's say that I asked you, how much sales did the salesman make if his weekly salary was $1,000? Okay, so it's a different kind of question. I'm asking now how much, uh, what's the dollar value of car sales that he made given a certain salary that he made? So that $1,000 we would plug in for W and then solve for S. So depending on the question they ask, sometimes you have to use the actual original function they asked for and sometimes you'll have to use the inverse.